Hello and welcome to or welcome back to Life Lessons with Sheila. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're new here and you like what you hear and see, then I invite you to click that subscribe button and become part of the Love Book family. Um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Sharing is caring, right? <laughs> Don't forget to smash that notification bell anytime. If you want to be notified anytime I go live, upload a video, share a short, or lend encouragement on my community tab, which is all done on my channel between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Let's hop into today's video, shall we? Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. It's Proverbs 4, 23. In life, we encounter countless voices. Some speak life, encouragement, and truth, while others sow seeds of doubt, fear, and negativity. It is crucial for us to be vigilant about the voices we allow to speak into our lives and dreams. God has created each of us with a specific purpose and intention, and we must protect that divine calling against any negativity that may deter us from fulfilling it. Steve Jobs was once quoted as saying, Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's dream, someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Before you were even born, God had a plan for your life. The Bible reminds us of this truth in Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future. God's plan for your life is filled with purpose, promise, and potential. Every dream and desire that aligns with His will is meant to draw you closer to Him and to fulfill His divine purpose for your existence. God's intentional design for your life is not a haphazard or accidental. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You are His masterpiece, crafted with precision and care to accomplish something unique in this world. But achieving that purpose requires staying focused and protecting the vision He has given you. Ralph Waldo Emerson was once quoted as saying, To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Words are powerful. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The words spoken into our lives can either build us up or tear us down. When we allow negative words to take root in our hearts, they can derail us from God's the path that God has set before us. These words can come from well-meaning friends, <clears throat> family members, or even strangers. They might question your abilities, cast doubt on your dreams, or speak fear into your future. Consider the story of David and Goliath. When David decided to fight Goliath, his brothers, and even King Saul questioned his abilities. They tried to speak fear and doubt into his heart, saying he was too young, inexperienced, and ill-equipped. But David knew his purpose. He understood that God had prepared him for this moment, and he refused to let their negative words deter him. With confidence in God's plan, he declared, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. It's 1 Samuel 17:37. David's steadfast faith and refusal to let others' negativities influence him led to a great victory. Les Brown was once quoted as saying, Other people's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. To guard your hearts, we must be selective about the voices we allow to influence us. Proverbs 13.20 warns, Walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Surround yourself with people who speak life, encourage you in your God-given purpose, and remind you of God's promises. Seek out those who uplift you and inspire you to grow closer to God. Jesus himself was careful about the company he kept. He surrounded himself with disciples who were committed to his mission 
even though he also engaged with sinners and skeptics to bring them to salvation. Jesus understood the importance of having a core group that supported his divine mission and reinforced the truth of God's word. In your journey, there will be naysayers and critics. Remember the words of Theodore Roosevelt, who famously said, It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong the man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood. Don't allow those who who aren't in the arena with you to dictate your path. Your journey is between you and God, and His voice is the one that matters most. When faced with negativity, respond with grace and truth. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 5.44, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. When someone speaks negatively about your dreams or your potential, choose to respond with love and kindness. You don't have to accept their words as truth, but you can still honor God in your response. Speak the truth of God's word over your life. When doubt arises, declare God's promises. Say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's found in Psalm 139.14. Or even, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me which is found in Philippians 4.13. Remind yourself daily that you are walking in God's purpose and that no negative word can thwart His plans for you. Here's some practical steps to guard your heart. First, stay rooted in Scripture. Make the Bible your anchor. Regularly meditate on God's promises and let them fill your heart and mind. When you're grounded in God's word, it becomes easier to discern truth from lies. Second, pray for discernment. Ask God for the wisdom to know which voices to heed and which to disregard. James 1.5 encourages us, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Third, surround yourself with encouragers. Build a support network of believers who will speak life into your dreams and encourage you to pursue God's calling with boldness and faith. Fourth, set boundaries. It's okay to set boundaries with people who consistently speak negatively negativity into your life. Protecting your heart sometimes means creating distance from those who are not aligned with God's purpose for you. And last but not least, speak life. Be mindful of your own words. Speak life over yourself and others. Proverbs 12, 18 reminds us, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Choose to be a source of healing and encouragement. God has created you for a purpose, and he has equipped you with everything you need to fulfill that purpose. Don't let the negative words of others deter you from the path he has set before you. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Refuse to give consent to negativity. Stand firm in your identity as a child of God and embrace the fullness of his plans for your life. Trust in God's intentional design. Guard your heart and let his word be the guiding voice in your life. With God on your side, there is no dream too big, no calling too daunting, and no purpose too great. Move forward with confidence, knowing that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That's in Philippians 1.6. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the unique purpose you have given me for my life. Help me to guard my heart against negativity and stay focused on your promises. Surround me with people who will encourage me and speak life into my dreams. May I always be reminded that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and that your plans for me are good. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And I hope on this beautiful day that you guys go out there and you just win the world. (laughs) I always say go win the world like you're winning it for Christ, because your actions and the words you speak will either lead someone to Christ or lead them away. The choice is yours. (laughs) It's a heavy thought to leave you with, but 
Well, your words are so important, especially the words you tell yourself. The words you speak to yourself should be words of encouragement and love and kindness and grace. Not words of discouragement, not words of shame, not words of discontent. That will be for another day. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you guys in the next video and I'll see you then. Bye.